This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos. When you join now, help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. Hey, what's up and welcome to comment commentary, the show where I go through my videos throughout the week, and comment on them. I couldn't get to every video because I think I literally did close to like 15 or 20 videos last week. So this would be like a five hour video. And as much as y'all say in the comment section that y'all watch a five hour video, I'm not going to try to make y'all watch you no know, five hour Snyder Cut video of me going through all these comments. So... Forgive me if I skip a video that you commented on, um, but I'm trying to get to the most interesting stuff. This first video that I'm going to be commenting on the video, uh, the comments from is that I'm still not giving up on Perry on Winfrey video um, and other players. Joshua Serrano says, if uh, I want Q as my defense attorney, if I ever need one. See, man, people get mad at me when I make a case for somebody that everybody hates that makes sense and act like. I said something that's like I I manufactured a way to defend somebody when it's like, no, I'm just using what makes sense in front of you. Right. You know, if what I said about Perry on Winfrey in the situation he was in kind of softened your stance on Perry on Winfrey, that's probably good because I'm just bringing new information up that nobody's bringing up because everybody has jumped on the train of, oh, well, you know, we going to be we going to ride the pack on Perry on Winfrey, basically. Right. And when everybody decides to smoke the pack on somebody, details get lost. Everybody just starts piling on and piling on and piling on. And then reason is out the window because everybody just wants to join the parade. I said, I'm going to stand right here in front of the parade and say, hey, maybe y'all don't want to do that. And it's not a popular thing to do, um, but sometimes somebody got to do it because defense attorneys exist for a reason, right? Like sometimes people need to be defended that publicly you can't really make much sense of at the moment. And that's what I like to do. Some people get mad at me for doing it. I've been called, uh, you know, a PR person for teams or stuff like that because I can blow a hole in somebody's point and explode it and make it not as confident in it as they were before. But I'm not doing anything that's magic. I'm just pointing out what's there. And if that blows a hole in your theory, it ain't because I'm some kind of great defense attorney. It's because, you know, I'm just pointing out something that's there that's, that was ignored. Uh, but thank you for the comment, Joshua. I will consider my future. Uh, if this YouTube thing doesn't work out, might have to go to law school, right? <laughs> <laughs> the next video I'm going to take comments from is what we learned from Deshaun Watson's interview. Um, the comment here, Homer Simpson, not the real one. Trading for Deshaun was history fixing itself. He should have been a Brown in 2017. Man, man, man. When he said that, I was like, we all knew it was something that was probable that the Browns were like this close to taking Deshaun Watson. And then for it to be confirmed just heartbreaking um you know imagine how different this franchise would have been if they would have got their quarterback of the future and their star edge rusher in one draft i mean you saw what the texans were willing to trade to try to have that happen for them and they could have did that and they could have got tj watt um but it's crazy um the browns draft cedric uh Tillman video the comment here was from Milamoff who says overly optimistic post Browns uh draft take he's obviously going to be a clean Josh Gordon Super Bowl here we go you know I had somebody in the comments get mad at me um I think during the live stream or it was one of the videos and forgive me I've done so many videos today I can't keep it all straight in my head but somebody got mad at me when I was talking, I think, to Kobe. Yeah, so this was a live stream, and I was saying, well, he's not Josh Gordon, right? Like, he's not the type of athlete that Josh Gordon was. And somebody was like, well, he measures in at the same stuff that Josh. And this is where I'm like, sometimes the measurables matter. Sometimes you need to see this for yourself because I don't care if they say that Josh Gordon was the same height and weight as Cedric Tillman. Anybody who has seen Josh Gordon in person knows exactly what I'm talking about. He is much heavier 
than the 215 that they listed him at his whole career. First time I saw Josh Gordon up close, I thought that was a tight end. I have seen plenty of 6'3", 215 guys in the NFL. Josh Gordon was not 6'3", 215. He was definitely 6'5". He was definitely 230-something. Okay, I don't know what's going on with his official measurements, but that's what he looked like in pads. And he ran much faster than the 4.54 that he did at his pro day. Uh, but, you know, so anybody thinking that we're getting the same athlete as Josh Gordon, that's ridiculous. Josh Gordon was a once in a generation type of athlete. Unfortunately, couldn't um, evade the NFL's draconian suspension policies at the time um, and was kind of a victim to that uh, at that time. So. No, Cedric Tillman's not going to be Josh Gordon, but he could be a good player. I really like the potential with him. The next video I'm going to take comments from is the Browns draft a giant DT. Will he fix the Browns run defense? Caden Van Steeg says, as a Browns fan and a Baylor student, I'm excited about this pick. He may not be a huge pass rush guy, but he certainly won't get blown five yards off the line of scrimmage on run plays like we saw from Elliott and Togiai last year. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, look, being big is not going to stop you from being moved off the ball in the NFL. Jordan Elliott, I believe, was at 320 last year. Now, I don't know what um, what Siaki Ike is going to come in and play as. I would assume he's going to come in lighter than what he did at college, given the Browns aren't going to play him at zero. So, mm, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens with him. Um, I'm not exactly high on him, but, you know, football gets evaluated when the pads are on. And you know, I'm excited to see what he does with pads on. And we'll see what that looks like. And then I'll give you a more thorough evaluation of him once he gets to play some actual football and get in the preseason and everything like that. All right, man. Dewan Jones draft video. We got Divine Bay Robertson who says, love to see my beloved Buckeyes come to my favorite team. Let's go dog pile. Um, it's interesting, right? Like the Browns have always gotten this flack for not drafting enough Buckeyes. And then this year we just go Buckeye crazy for whatever reason. But, you know, for those of you who do chair for Ohio State, I bet this is fun for you. Uh, a bunch of offensive linemen there. Dewan Jones is Another guy who I can't wait to see what happens with him in camp because you're not going to see a bigger person than him. Like it's going to be like for those of you who have never were never wrestling fans, you're going to see Dewan Jones and that's you're going to feel the same way I did when I was seven years old and the big show walked past me. <laughs> like he is the same size as the dude who was the big show, right? And I know they listed the big show at seven feet tall. Big show is actually like six, nine, six, ten, around 400 pounds, even at his biggest. Um, you know, you know, I wrestling, they be lying about weight and height and all that. But he is literally big show. So like if he stepped into WWE right now or AW, whatever wrestling company you enjoy, he would be the big show. That's how big this dude is. Now, that being said, he's a better athlete than the Big Show, right? Like, I mean, like, clearly Big Show didn't have an NFL career. Um, Dewan Jones is. He is skilled. He is talented. Very long. Super long. Really strong. But the other questions about him are, are, are a bit intriguing, right? Why does a dude that good, whose tape's that good, whose, whose measurables are that good, fall all the way to the fourth round? It's because he terrified coaches. Uh, Browns draft their clowning replacements. My Isaiah McGuire video. Uh, the comment here from Stomping P. Honestly, I feel better about the team now um, than I did last season. We'll probably get another guy or two um, in a while. But we have to try out the young guys. We can't just keep buying out positions because of the cap. Yeah. I mean, look, they got to develop some pieces here. They can sign some stopgap solutions here. They only have so many room, so much room for stopgap solutions. Like every year, maybe you have two positions that you can fix in free agency if you're the Browns with your current cap situation. Everything else has to be fixed with young players. They would love to solve their edge problem in the draft because that would be much cheaper than solving it in free agency, right? And again, remember, different positions command different amounts of money. While you can get a cheap safety here or there and you can get a cheap linebacker here or there if you need a starter, you can fill those two positions in free agency, you'll be fine. 
But if you need an edge rusher and you're in the Browns situation, that's about the only thing you're going to be able to fix in free agency. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have the room to flex to, to mess around here. I would expect once they start getting premium picks back, they're going to start drafting edges like crazy because they want to get that position cheap, especially when Deshaun Watson's under contract. We did a video about Jed's fifth year option with uh, Jake Byrne. All in all, I'm glad they picked up his option. I feel like it's the best choice on the roster. No need to create a hole on the old line because Wills isn't perfect right um this is the old saying don't let perfect be the enemy of good and jed wills is the epitome of like yeah I, you know what i mean like he's not the greatest left tackle in the world i've always gone on, on record and saying this there's some people who think i flipped the tune on jed wills it's not the case i never made the argument that jed was like a pro bowl player what i always made the argument was like jed's good enough that you can't just let him go right he kind of is what he always was, right? Which is a solid tackle who had some issues, and he just never developed past that. Um, and that that's the problem, right? I think one of the main things I alluded to in that video was like, okay, let's say you don't give Jed that fifth-year option, and this is his last year as a Cleveland Brown. What are you going to do in 2024 where you don't have a free – where you don't have a first-round pick, who knows where you're picking in the second round? Like, we're hoping that this seems good. So we're talking about late second round pick. You know, you're not going to fix less tackle with a late second round pick. Um, and you're definitely not drafting a day one starter with a late second round pick. You don't have any options to trade up and get somebody. You don't have the money to sign a top tier guard, a uh, uh, left tackle. So what you're going to end up doing is signing a mid tier left tackle. And you know who's a mid tier left tackle? Jed Wills. We're running around in circles to come to the same solution. You might as well just picked up his fifth year option if that's the only real choices you're going to have um, to replace him. Right. If the replacement cannot be better than what's on hand and what are we doing? And that's the solution that they came to with Jed Wills. I understand why he is frustrating to some. But that doesn't change the fact that the solution. To the problem is not a better solution than what the problem is. You're only going to make things worse, right? And if that's the base, if that's the result of that decision, then that's the result. But I understand why the Browns did the fifth year option because your best case scenario, if you get rid of Jet Wills, is signing somebody who's worse than Jet Wills or just as good. And that's not a good way to go. That's my uh, thoughts on the comments today. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Y'all have a great day. Have a good day.